I knew a, fr- I knew a guy one time. Uh, he rode my, rode my bus. He lived in my neighborhood. When I was growing up, and he had a streak of, like, white hair. Like, completely white hair on the front of his head. And it was a birthmark. Oh, that's it's what he called it. Like, he said that that's what they told him it was. It was a birthmark, and he would shave his head, and it would grow back right there. there there's this kid I went to high wild. school with, and he claimed it was a birthmark, too, but it was terrifying. He had the, the white of his eyes was forever bloodshot. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, but no. like dark red, not like, you know, like you've uh, not slept for a bit. Like it was like maroon and then he had green eyes. But then, you know how you have like those kind of squigglies that come into your eyes. Like mine are yellow. Your, I think yours are yellowish. His were red again. So he had demonic eyes. Like both of them. Both of them. Both of them. Both them. Oh, fuck. Yeah, but he was kind of cool. Way. I always thought like he, he like was holding his breath too much or something. You know what I mean? It was just, that was his eyes. It was Golly. That's wow. Yeah, scary, that's kind of man. Fun. Nice kid. I wonder what he does now. Probably murders people. <laughs> <laughs> or he's just a vampire or some shit. It's probably but something that suits his eyeballs. Yeah. I yeah. Know. I wonder. Interesting. Dude, Jake's a long time to see. Yeah, man. It's been a while. It's been like 48 hours. <laughs> Maybe not even 48 hours, I don't think. Dude, Logan, we had such a good time. When are you going to come hang out? We need Logan to yeah, come hang Logan, out. Yeah, Logan, you got to come, man. If, if you had been there this weekend, you would have been like, this is the best ever. I yeah. mean, it was the perfect move. Bro, we got it together. Was like, so good. Friday, Friday, we got there. I mean, obviously, like, Friday was just kind of, like, chill. Like I've, I'm grateful for that, though, because, like, we all stayed up late on Saturday, but we weren't exhausted. Yeah. You like, know? Friday, I was, like, I hadn't had one in, like, a month or over a month because I was been prepping for that shoot. Right. And so I drank some wine really fast, dude. <laughs> Everybody's like, Joe, we just see you stumbling out. You just get up and, like, stumble away and don't come back. And I was like, dude, I went and fucking passed out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I eat some uh, Uncrustables. So we live – when we're in the woods, we love off of Uncrustables, and then we make Waffle House stops. Yeah, you were talking about the Waffle House We stops. had two Waffle House stops over the weekend. Whataburger. <laughs> Whataburger and probably 50 Uncrustables. Dude, I ate at least 10 Uncrustables. Yeah, I know. I was <laughs> – they were hitting the spot. And though. deer sausage. I had a couple marshmallows. Steak. I just saw some marshmallows sitting there. I was like, oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Zoe just, <laughs> I'm just going to abruptly leave, but leave a pack of marshmallows <laughs> and not say anything to anybody. <laughs> what I'm just going to leave these behind. Don't yeah, it's so uh, weird. Know. They're like half hidden. As yeah. if she, it was like a secret stash of marshmallows. Just yeah. marshmallows. But, but, dude, it was so much fun. And then Saturday we got up and, like I said, we did a Waffle House run. Made her. First, we had to go to Piggly Wiggly because I had to go. Use the, the, to- nicest pig- the nicest Piggly Wiggly. The nicest Piggly Wiggly you ever walked into, dude. Brand new. They had like a hole in the middle of the store. They just had all these tables set up where you could just get some barbecue and hang out at the oh, Piggly really? <laughs> with the worst music <laughs> in the world. But I took a, yeah, we, of course, that's where I had to go use a toilet. Yeah, did Waffle House and you then uh, sat in the, the crick. Sat in the crick. Well, we did sparring. For, we did sparring for a while. Yeah. And we sparred nonstop. <laughs> I was tired, man. Like, my legs were tired. Yeah. It, and I run a lot. I was just like, how is this? I don't understand. Like, it's how do I get so winded in yeah. boxing, but I can run 10 miles like it's nothing? I oh, think yeah. it's just the boxing because you don't realize, like, you're... Don't, I, I was breathing way I heavier. Gonna, I was going to say that a lot, yeah. of, a lot of it with boxing is breathing. Yep. Yeah. You know, you don't realize you're holding your breath. I just get excited, man, because yeah. I, I box so infrequently that whenever I get to, I get <laughs> so excited. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, when I get hit, I'll start gritting yeah. so big. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. like, a, it's like Jack's laid one right on my nose, and I just look with smiling so big. I was like, this is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> I know Brett's little brother, he, uh, he chalked me in the – Cut me in the jaw pretty good, but I just kept, he come up to me and I'd pop him right in the nose. He was like, fuck. Dude, I, so I told you I'd put out like a, a little thing on Instagram. Like, Hey, if you have a serpent you were trying to slay, you just want to talk about it with somebody like, let me know. And so I talked to this kid from Germany yesterday, 17 years old. And his biggest serpent he's trying to slay is he just doesn't have the confidence to do the things he wants to do. And I was like, well, what's the number one thing you want to do right now? I know a grown man like that that doesn't even, he's not with us yeah, anymore. Right? <laughs> but he wanted to go to an MMA gym and he's like, I think, you know, I really understand all the reasons I want to do it, but I think I'm just afraid to get hit in the face. I was like, let me tell you about getting hit in the face. I got hit in the face like five times on Saturday and I was grinning <laughs> so much because I was like, I'm about to hit this guy in the face. Dude, I like it, man. It, it, I do too. Like, yeah. It, I, but I, I like when I get hit. It's just like, I don't know. It's, it just reminds Especially you. Especially like, your friend, you know. <laughs> You're like, you asshole. And then know. we put our prospect. So our prospect is like pretty small dude. Yeah. But he's scra- He's a scrappy dude. Like, he, I mean, he's, he hits hard. He's done the bare knuckle a few times. Uh, he's had amateur fight, boxing. But, of course, he's our prospect. So we had to put him through the gauntlet. 
So, like, he had to fight all of us in a row, like, two-minute rounds each. Yeah. And by the t- I was the third person to go with him. By the time he got to me, he was tired. And I was, was trying not to go tired. too hard, but I fucking threw a right hook. And his face just went right into it. And he just goes, don't. <laughs> <laughs> but he got right back up and kept rolling, man. I fucking he, – he had a couple more rounds, like, people after that, but – and he, he was wearing that purple kilt, and that little kid just kept saying, he's got a skirt on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the little redhead kid? Yeah, he was like, it's a kilt, dude. It's cool. Kid was like, he's like, holes and shit. Skirt. Why is he wearing a skirt? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. It's yeah. like his little six-year-old talking shit. <laughs> yeah. Our prospect is very worthless, but he's, yeah. a, he's a wonderfully worthless guy. I don't even know how to describe it. No, he's pretty good. Jax is awesome. He is dope. But you're still worthless, if you're listening. But well, we just had yeah, to tell him that. It's part of the game, game, you know? It's part of the game. At least he knows it. At least he knows it. He owns it. And then, yeah, then we had a fucking... We went and hung out in the creek, dude. We just sat in the creek for it like... Was super shallow, too. That was the best part. So we were just like sitting there for maybe like... Maybe a foot deep. Yeah. But so it was nice. Sitting there for like two hours, just hanging out in the creek, in the middle of nowhere. Getting sunburned. Then we had like the best ritual ever. Getting sunburned. Ritual was yeah, great. Yeah, because we, there wasn't enough water to hide your skin, you know? We are yeah. just like... Yeah. But it yeah, felt yeah, great. Pretty red. And then yeah. we, we had ritual, and then we ate a bunch of mushroom chocolates and had a fucking awesome night. Yeah. It was so cool. Mike turned into a boar. No, was, I mean, a boar did, yeah. yeah. He did turn into a boar, like man. Legitimately. <laughs> you could hear it. What does that mean? Like, remember I said my mushroom trip, like, I went and turned into a wolf? Like, spirit. Oh, yeah. So, like, the same thing walking. happened to him. Like, yeah. the, that next day I called him. He's like, dude, I did the exact same fucking thing. Almost the same timeline of events. That was the weird part yeah. for, for you and I. But then our friend, the warden, basically had... The, oh, you called him the next day and said that. No, no. So, Joe called me. Like, I went, what, two weeks before you did? Because my birthday's a little before Joe's. And, uh, and I had basically the same experience of him but i didn't tell him yet and so then mm. when when the next day he was like bro i just had the best experience of my life and he's describing to me I'm like i did the identical yeah, same thing in the same <clears throat> spot and uh then our friend the warden this past weekend like he basically went on his own little spirit quest and uh we just we legitimately thought there was a wild boar in the in the woods it sounded like a boar the breathing sounded like a boar. <laughs> the, everything was boar. You know what I mean? And we go back there. We can't see him, and we have flashlights. And and I was like, dude, warden spirit walking straight up. He's spirit walking. And he wouldn't answer us either, you know? Yeah. And then finally, like, he just goes, <laughs> and just goes through his brush like a maniac, and then emerges. And, and me and my buddy Mike look at each other like, dude, he was legitimately, like, in spirit yeah. form. Yeah. I mean, there's no other explanation. Damn. And then they were like, damn, y'all are onto something with this yeah. whole fucking Cause, spirit Because the thing, thing is, you, you just have to, like, let it happen. Like, because he just decided, I'm going to walk out into the woods and just kind of, like, let my let my guard down and just let the force work through me. And right. that's what happened. You know yeah. what I mean? So It's interesting. It's a good time. <sighs> cool time. But anyways, maybe, Logan, Logan, maybe you'll roll with us one day. Yeah. I mean, the... I was telling Hank, Hank said something about that last week whenever we were recording, and it was right after they just told like twenty minutes worth of stories about how they just like fucking beat the shit out of uh, a, a new guy and humiliated him and all this other <laughs> stuff. And I was like, yeah, no, I think I think I'm good on that one. I mean, but, you don't really have to fight or anything. No, I don't no. care about. No, I wouldn't care about that. I'm just I'm just messing around. But it's just funny because every time that he tells me like, hey, you should come out there, and it's like right after he just told this like really fucked up story about like, <laughs> shit that happened. We almost to died. It was yeah. great. You should go. Dude, dude, like lost his fingers. <laughs> we had to sew them back on. It was a, yeah, nothing yeah, crazy. Just, no, I think I think like now, like we're definitely gonna have some stuff at Grootly Lager, like the place Joe and I both went. And um, like for for our Tennessee guys, we're gonna we're gonna do some stuff. So you'd be more than welcome, man. Yeah, because yeah. we just want to like get men together to like yeah, just not necessarily be a part of that, but like get together and like I don't know. How do, we, how do we want to put it? Go hike. Help them grow <laughs> hike. Go hiking, you know, go grow. Talk about grow. shit. Let your guard down. Talk like, I, I think men are so freaking terrified of admitting what they're actually feeling. Unless it's to another dude that's doing the same thing. And if you're willing to do that, and that's kind of like the central focus, it's so transformative. Like you and I have done this with each other a lot. Jesse and both of us have done this a lot. Brett, I know like, we'll we'll just drop the guard. It's like, yeah, we're all trying to be tough and push each other to, to do like manly things, but it's pretty masculine to be secure enough in yourself to admit where you failed and where you're struggling and say, hey, like, 
I just need a little bit of help with this, you know? Yeah. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's pretty, it's powerful, man. So, so be doing more shit like that for show. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. But anyways, ready to roll? Oh yeah. I mean, this is all going in there. So. Okay. All right. So we're really already like 11 minutes in, but oh, it's okay. Good. <laughs> all right. Mess up your intro. Uh, what is up everybody? This is Joe Adams and welcome to the Relentless Pursuit Podcast. Today, as always, we got my man Logan Hyder of Cinema 83 LLC behind the boards doing his thing, co-hosting. What's up, welcome, what's up, welcome. What's up, what's up, what's up? And we also have a very wonderful guest, one of my best friends in the world, and my brother, Jake Furnish. What's up, man? Welcome, buddy. Thanks for welcome. finally getting me on. Yeah. I know. It's about fucking time. Damn. I just live forever away. <laughs> he does, man. Jake, well, said, Jake, we used to live <laughs> two houses Literally, apart yeah. in Lebanon. We were trying to take over Lebanon, <laughs> but then the road got too busy and our dogs were getting hit by cars. Right? Yeah. Let's get out of here. And then a bunch of other shit. <laughs> yeah. And then we're like, all right, this ain't fucking working there's a, out. There's a few other things. There's, there's, yeah. There's a detail or two in there. There's, there's bad energy. But really, it was the dogs for me. <laughs> <laughs> Did your dog get hit? Yeah. When it, when that big snow happened, like what? 2021? Beginning of last year. Yeah. yeah. she She's a, a Malamute and she, she was just like, snow! And running out and uh, this dude just hauling ass down in a dually doesn't even remotely try and stop and just he, he he clipped her with the tire and she like rolled under it probably she didn't break a rib but it was pretty bruised when we took her in um but she's fine now but uh, man she, she is okay okay she's fine but I thought, I thought that was a really terribly sad story for a second well it's the, the first fuck, time I, I mean i've had a dog get hit by a car once other time when i lived in japan my dog got hit by a car and she just like shot 20 feet forward and rolled and then just propped up and looked at me it was like that was weird it was fine but she's indestructible um <laughs> she so. looked at you like you look at the person who hit you in the nose right she's yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah that was fucking pretty fun. pretty yeah, much do that yeah. again yeah i had a little shiba when i was in japan she's with my mom now but um but yeah seeing your dog get hit by a car it's yeah, Pretty that's, terrifying. Yeah, that's yeah I don't that's even think about it. Oh, I got yeah, a pond maybe. buffer. What's yeah. that? Now I got the pond to buffer the road. Yeah, you do. You do. And they, they stay around. I mean, it seems like it. you just kind of let them she run does. wild. The other ones just disappear for hours on end. <laughs> and then just come back. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry. Adventure. But yeah, so, um, yeah, we live right by each other. Now he lives about an hour and a half away, but it's beautiful out there yeah. um, where you're at. So it's... Where's um, that? Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. So, oh, yeah. it's it's Etheridge. So it's Etheridge. it's right near Lawrenceburg, okay. Tennessee. But it's um, it's an Amish community. It's, oh. it, and I'm like one of probably I don't know ten households that's non Amish. Really, everyone around me is Amish, and uh, and I love it, man. It's, that's fascinating. It, it's like it is. What is that like? Well, you know how Tennessee, like you've been here a while. If you're on a back road, there, you're yeah. doing 100 miles an hour. That's yeah. just what we do in Tennessee. Yeah. So you'll be, you have a combination of that, and then all of a sudden there's a buggy. And, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's such a weird dichotomy of like dudes and hot rods and Harleys and then buggies. And, uh, but yeah, it's uh, all these. So they're the Stugenbacher Amish, I think. I can't remember the name, but they're, they're like the oldest, most uh, staunch Amish in America. Really? And they came from Ohio and settled in Etheridge. I don't know, in the sixties or something like that. But um all they have all their little family farms and it's super communal based, but they're all obsessed with fishing. So they all come over to my house to ask if they can fish my pond. So I just have turned into like a barter system. Like, well, I really need the field mode. Yeah, know? yeah. You know, that or bring me a pie. Or like yeah. lately they've been bringing quail eggs, which I'm not, I haven't ate yet. I'll be honest. They're just sitting in the fridge. So, like, <laughs> it's a little spooky. They're like jalapeno quail eggs, but the size just gives me, I don't know. I know they're good. I trust them, but uh, yeah, they're just sitting in the fridge. I have like four packs of quail eggs. <laughs> That's crazy. But the pies. Mm, so bad. bartering with the Amish. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I in general kind of detest monetary systems. So yeah. I, I like, I like communal bartering. I like, uh, you know, how can I help you and can, how can you help me? Not for the sake of like quid pro quo or whatever, but you know, that's just being a community. That's being a neighbor. Yeah. So yeah. They're that's, big that's about should be. that. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you nice. bring to the table? How can you provide for each other and help each other thrive? You know, yeah. everybody has offered something different. So yeah, it's been cool. Yeah. I like it. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's pretty fascinating. But yeah, Jay, can I go back, man? I mean, you know, I've been involved with him through the whole, I guess you could call it wolf cult world yeah. since, uh, what, 2018? 
Met you in 2018 yep. at a metal show in Atlanta, and and then yeah, we've been boys since. So it's been <laughs> it's been a hell of a road. Many a day at college getting some sushi bowls. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, went to MTSU together. It was a good times hauling asses on Harley's, fucking, oh, yeah. <laughs> just doing crazy shit. It was awesome, man. Getting hit by cars on Harley. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. We've, fun times. We, it's been fun it's times. been a blast. It's been a blast. But um, so Jake, <clears throat> we'll get to that. We'll get, we'll branch more into it. So we want to get to know you though. We got we got to let the uh, the audience to know who Jake Furnish is. So mm. take us back, you know, take us back mm. however far you want to go. Um, just tell us your story. Tell us about you. You know what you do, and then we'll get into some uh, some topics. Cool. So uh, I was born in the same hospital as you in Tampa, Florida, which yeah. is bizarre. We're pretty <laughs> sure we had the same doctor, uh, Snip Snip us. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I grew up. In Middle Tennessee, though, we moved here the first time when I was, um, I don't know, like four, something like that. Lived in Alabama for a couple of years before that. And uh, then we, we were here for basically kindergarten, first grade. Moved down to Georgia. And uh, I love Georgia, man. We lived in this, uh, this cul-de-sac. And every house on the cul-de-sac was a, a boy's family. Like, it had at least two little boys. So we had, like, 15 young little boys all in this neighborhood and we were just absolute maniacs um we we uh did what all little boys do and got into some trouble so we had like we called them chromies but you know on cars the little valve caps that cover just the, jacket everybody's chrome if they were if they were nice ones and we used it as a <laughs> currency for each other so it's like yeah pokemon cards it's like how many chromies is that for so it was yeah. like, hurry, we use oyster shit. Yeah, it's like the oysters, but it was chromies. <laughs> Until we all got caught, and our parents were like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I was there, and uh, 9-11 happened. My dad was in uh, was in New York on his way to the World Trade Center when that happened. And oh, so really? I remember being in school, and the uh, principal came in. He's like, just want to let you know your dad is okay. I have no idea what you're talking about because we, we didn't know that the, yeah. I was like, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So you were in Georgia and he was in New York. Yeah. He, well, so his business, he traveled a lot at that time. He was, um, he was founding a company with a couple people, uh, that was like a software company basically. And at that point in time, he was going to the world trade center for, for work. And he saw the plane hit and, uh, I guess the taxi driver like turned around and he's like, we don't go that way. <laughs> and they just pulled a UE in the middle of the road, but we didn't hear from for for a couple of days because you know power was out and like state of emergency and all. Um, but after that, his job kind of shifted, and so then he, um, when we had lived in Georgia or in Tennessee the first time before we moved down to Georgia, he was working for Opryland, and he really liked it there. And he uh, reached out to them, and they they offered him a new job at like a higher position. So we moved back up to Tennessee uh, around like sixth grade. And I've been here since then, um, went to high school up in Hendersonville, went to JP2, although I'm not Catholic, my, like they had some scholarship program, I think, where you had to like let in so many non-Catholics. And so, <laughs> I re- yeah, right. Really? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah I, I think they really did because so it's they, like a minority scholarship. Well, yeah, literally, literally. But they, they asked me to write like an essay, right, to, to say why I wanted to go to school there. My parents are, of course, like, you want to go to school here? I'm like, how do I force that? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, so I, I wrote the essay and then I was able to be like one of the non-Catholic kids there. Uh, it, it was a weird kind of school, to be honest. It was, yeah, um, all, again, I'm not Catholic. I was raised Southern Baptist. Yeah. So I was like, y'all eat your God. That's weird. You know, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you eat your God. yeah, but it was, uh, it was in retrospect, a really good experience. Um, all those kids went to, to like preschool and middle school and yeah. everything together. Yeah. So it was very clicky, yeah. but, uh, I got to play lacrosse there, which I loved. Uh, I was, I did wrestling, football, and lacrosse, and uh, I got really big into cars and motorcycles while I was there, too. I had this friend named Mitch that uh, he was kind of a troublemaker, but he was like a hot rod guy. And me and Mitch were, were good friends. Uh, was he one of them non-Catholic boys, too? He was Catholic. Oh. He, he was an Irish boy, but um, but yeah, Mitch Mitch was cool. And uh, Super random real quick, but so 9-11, he switched jobs because like his the place he worked didn't exist anymore, basically? Or? Well, it... Yes and no. So he, he ended up getting actually screwed over by um, the co-founder of the company with him. She like kind of scalped all his ideas and just like boxed him out. It was it was a little bit messed up, but uh, he had some good contacts that he had made when he was up here the first time. And um, he always really loved the hospitality industry. My dad was, uh, so my parents, before they had me, they were traveling the world as uh, 
artists. Like they were in this group called Up With People, which I think is still around. But it's like a, it was like a Christian based uh, play production musical group. And they were both like featured singers in it. And that's how they fell in love. And, you know, I think they like met in Italy or something crazy like that. And that's then, cool. And then I ruined it all because my mom got pregnant with Dude, me. That's a wild story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah th- that literally, they, like, they, they performed for the Pope and all kinds of wild what? stuff. So my dad likes taking care of people and making yeah. them entertained. Right. So hospitality has been a natural fit for him. And, um, so he he took the job up. Uh, he was like the director of sales at Opryland for a while there, and uh, he really enjoyed it. He really enjoyed like helping book conventions and kind of bringing some new growth to Nashville. Um, so that that's what brought him here when we when we came back. And uh, I get to meet your dad soon, don't I? Isn't he coming up? Yeah, I think he's coming up in May. Um, I'm trying to get him to come come hang out. Uh, hopefully, we can take him out to the woods and get him on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, he would love it, man. He, <laughs> he would he would do it. Oh yeah, Sounds fascinating, like a fascinating guy. I, it's always cool to like. That's the thing He's, too is like if you don't know somebody, just get them on the show, and then yeah, you get to yeah, it, exactly. you get to meet them and learn their story, and it's yeah. like whoa. But oh, also, it's getting out there. Yeah. My my dad is so like I think I inherit this from him, but um, he's very eclectic. Like he might have his one area of focus, but then there's like a million things in the background that he's into. Right. So like he was a, basically a professional musician traveling the world when he met my mom and then he wanted to be an actor. And obviously I kind of ruined that for them and they had to figure stuff out. But then, Bastard. you know, he's been in hospitality, but then he's like the director of the airport on his little island. He lives on. He's like, I don't even know how to fly. I don't know how I ended up here. So, so <laughs> he's an interesting guy. He, yeah, yeah. he rides Harleys. He's got a, he's got a, a road glide. Sweet, dude. Oh, yeah. So it's been a hell of a journey, man. I didn't know that about your parents. It's pretty interesting. They had quite, yeah, quite yeah. the road. Um, so, yeah, ended up here. Uh, that would be a good connection to what you were talking about when I interrupted you. You were talking about how you became, you started getting into motorcycles and stuff. Yeah, well, so that was when we first, when we moved up to Tennessee, uh, I was just like, I've always been obsessed with anything fast. Like, when I was a little kid, when we'd be on road trips, we would travel a lot, just like adventuring. My parents always were big about regardless if they had a kid or not, you know, my brother's 18 months younger than I. So for a while there was just Drew and I, and, uh, we were like, we're going to go backpacking here. We're going to see our grandparents. They're like 10 hours away. Like we were always doing something, which I really appreciated. And, um, my mom made like a little lullaby for me. That was all about big trucks. It was literally like big truck. Come on a big truck. And like, <laughs> but that was me as a little kid. I was like big truck. That was like the first words yeah. I said. I was like big truck. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's good. dude. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, that's what and, you want. That's yeah. what little boys need to be like a hundred percent. But then it was from big trucks to like fast cars to motorcycles and uh, yeah, anything that's fast and dangerous. I'm probably going to be into. Yeah. I love it, dude. So yeah. The, but then, um, Let's see. Uh, so I went to, to public middle school up here in Hendersonville and um, made a lot of good friends there. But it was kind of an insular community at that time. And Hendersonville is like, if you didn't go to the Baptist church, you were a Catholic. And if you didn't go to the Catholic church, you were a Baptist. And if you weren't either of those things, you were going to hell. You know? And nice. So yeah, yeah. pitchforks <laughs> coming. Right. So this is after JP2? No, this is like middle school. And then, then I went to JP2. Yeah. So I kind of branched away from my friends that I went to middle school with. Okay. Um, and tried to make new friends there. And, uh, you know, I made some friends there. But I the education was exceptional. I will say that. Like, I'm very grateful that my parents were able to help me get to somewhere where I could um, have a little bit more in-depth of a uh, education i think that stuck with me for a while because i had like psychology classes and philosophy classes in yeah, high school yeah. you know and that was huge but uh my junior year my best friend at the time nathan johnson uh he died in a car wreck uh right in front basically of our high school uh, or the the middle school that we had gone to school with and it was a uh, like a really really traumatic thing for our community because he was like Although I'm not a Christian, he was like the perfect Christian young man. You know what I mean? Like athletic, good looking, kind to everybody, love in his heart. And he was like, he was just a perfect kid. Yeah. And uh, he was, I believe, on his phone texting or something like that and kind of drifted over the lane and a cement truck hit him. Damn. And so they they airlifted him and I think he passed away on, on the flight. <clears throat> but that obviously kind of brought our community pretty closely together. It was, it was a really, really rough time for everybody in that area. And I was like, I can't go to this school anymore. I have to be at my school with my friends. Cause we just lost like our brother. You know what I mean? I have to get back to this school. And so my parents were really against it. Cause obviously they're like, 
this is a nice school. You're going to get into a good college, all these things. I was like, I got to be with like my community. What grade were, were you in at that time? That was junior year. So, so my senior year, I went back to public yeah, that's a school. That's time to switch. Yeah, 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 it was. But the benefit was because I was at JP2 for most of high school. I had like accelerated past the public school curriculum. So I was like, I didn't have to do yeah, that I many classes. Had, I bet you had. Yeah. <laughs> like there's a lot of classes that they're like, oh, you're good. You don't have to come in. So I was just yeah. like, I'm gonna go they're fishing, like, you know? <laughs> yeah. Psychology? We don't even fucking offer that. <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, that that was that was a, a big moment in my life because it helped me distinguish between um I guess you could say like prescribed spirituality and then the type of spirituality that you can feel with groups of people like regardless of what you believe you're like this is my kin spiritually or something yeah, like that yeah. you know what i mean so i i never really felt that much of a resonance to christianity when we first moved back up to tennessee you know we went on this like a uh, little and this is middle school again uh went on this like little retreat with the sunday school teacher and i just remember being front been confronted by like the cool kids and they're like are you saved i was like from what like, <laughs> and they're like well you know if you're not saved like it's over like you're going to hell i'm like, I'm like 11 years old you're you like, know i'm like, oh, like I, the worst thing i've done is like chromies you know <laughs> like, no, for that what you're like oh my uh, god so 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 I, I felt like super pressured you know like to accept jesus or whatever and and um that got me in the in crowd which was the church crowd but those are also like the popular kids in school right it's funny because those are the unpopular kids at my school. But. Well, yeah, now it's now it's totally reversed, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. but yeah, like Hendersonville at that point in time, especially where we are at, it's like kind of where Johnny Cash used to live. It's like the backside of Hendersonville and the Hollers, and it's like real country. It's amazing area, but uh, if you weren't part of that Baptist community, like you weren't anything. Like the whole community went to that church. You know what yeah. I mean? And if they didn't, there was another church down the road that was like our rival church. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so <clears throat> when that happened with Nathan. Um, I had also already been kind of, you know, interested because of things like philosophy and, uh, and psychology, like in some alternative thought, I guess you could say. And I didn't really feel this deep resonance to Christianity, but I was part of, I was very active in the Christian community there because that was where all my friends were. So when Nathan died, um, we had his funeral and the, the number one thing I'll never forget my entire life is at his funeral, it was like storming outside, but it wasn't that bad. And one of the pastors cut the power in the middle of, like, basically the eulogy. Here's why I know it's bullshit. Mysteriously, the mic still worked. And he's like, guys, Nathan's here with us. He just cut the power. If you feel that, let me know. And I was like, I'm out. I'm never coming back. This is bullshit like yeah. you're capitalizing on this young man's death to try and like pander for you know offerings and I, I it was i was livid and i never went back what yeah yes, and uh brett uh, described something similar it was dude it was so insulting i remember i made a clip about it because uh, yeah. he, he said that somebody cap i don't remember who it was his grandma i think yeah yeah he said yeah. his grandma that at the funeral they were they were offering tithes or they were asking for tithes yeah yeah like, that's and, not um, the place it's not the place and um you know, it just, I've always had a pretty strong personality. So when I'm confronted with things that just don't hold resonance to what I know to be me internally, I can't prolong it or yeah. I try my best not to. Right. Yeah. So, uh, I went back to high school that senior year, but I was, I was done with the church community. And that's when I started getting into like black metal and a lot of stuff so then like there's a little bit of the like full spectrum pushback and i'm like satan you know like which clearly <laughs> clearly i don't at all worship satan i it think was, it's like it was more like the rebellion yeah. it was more the rebellion and uh oddly enough like the majority of the metal concerts at hendersonville in that point in time we're all in churches too so it was, it was like the only <laughs> venues around and you got yeah. like these like hardcore shows and stuff and people like beating the crap out of each other mosh but it's like We'll Baptist see you church. tomorrow at Sunday church. <laughs> it was such a weird, it was cool, but it was, it was such a weird mashup of culture. You know, this episode is brought to you by relentless pursuit. Please check us out at www.relentlesspursuitlifestyle.com. Show us some love, grab some apparel, uh, check out what the brand's about. Um, also check us out on Instagram at relentless underscore pursuit. Check out all the headquarters stuff at Relentless Pursuit underscore HQ as well on Instagram. And please go like, share, subscribe, and review on all 
uh, platforms as far as the podcast goes. Um, we're definitely looking for sponsors. Um, so we'd love to have you. Our This thing is growing like crazy. I mean, the analytics are just getting better and better. I was checking it out yesterday. I was like, holy shit. Um, we're just beating, you know previous fucking numbers like crazy just as we go along so it's really cool um so definitely check that out and check out that opportunity and soon uh we'll be launching the patreon account for you to subscribe we'll do, be doing exclusive episodes exclusive content um apparel releases discount codes stuff like that uh, to add a lot of value and this episode's also brought, also brought to you by cinema 83 llc with my man logan hyder yeah. so check them out for all your podcasting needs your videography needs all that crazy content stuff that i don't quite understand <laughs> that crazy content stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> yeah definitely check him out he'll, he'll he'll get you squared away and i'll pass it on to my boy jake what's going on so uh yeah the project i've been working on lately is kind of the culmination of uh, a lot of things that have pr- transpired in my life and the most basic way to put it is the world is dark we need to bring light it's that simple so I conceptualize that as the quest for the Holy Grail. And uh, so you can find me on uh, Instagram, Company of the Grail, uh, separated by underscores, or uh, Company of the Grail at squarespace.com. So offering some consulting, uh, a little bit of astrology in there as well. But broadly speaking, it's just a project to help connect others to, you know, find the light within themselves that's unique <laughs> to them, cultivate that inner flame and bring it to the world because, uh, this darkness is pretty annoying, and let's just uh, let's do good stuff. Let's bring beauty back to the world. Yes, I love it. And that, that Grail is G R A A L, right? Grail, yeah, French spelling because uh, I got some French ancestry. So G R A A L. Yeah, I just saw that on my phone like thirty seconds plus, ago. So plus, plus the like the, sure they know. the the Holy Grail spelt, you know, A I L or with the A and I is uh, most usually associated with like the Christian stuff. So I'm trying to encompass the whole Grail mythos. Gotcha. So that is G A A L. G R A A L. Gaul. Growl. If you think about Monty Python, you know where he's like, the growl. Yeah. Basically like that. <laughs> you were talking about how you turned away from organized religion and you went to black metal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, obviously my parents were musicians. So I grew up listening to hair metal. So like metal was already there, but it yeah. just got progressively heavier and it kind of coincided with some more of these, uh, I guess, interests in like esoteric matters and trying to, to see what was going on behind the mainstream currents of religion, you know? And uh, so I, I started getting, more deep into things like alchemy and um, uh, like platonic philosophy and uh, just trying to, to delve deeper into religion in a way that, that seemed to be calling to me. And that coincided very well with, you know, a lot of black metal themes are like self overcoming and, and trials and tribulations, but usually in this like spiritual component, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's a lot of um, resonance with like, being in a wasteland or like some desolate place and just trying to find that internal fire, you know, like that's always black metal always makes me feel like you're overcoming. Even when it's like really depressive black metal, it's like the art itself is an act of overcoming. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, I, I was reading about that cause there's one black metal band that's like suicidal black metal. And that the music theme is like, they started that, you know, shining. Yeah. Yeah. And like this, the theme is like, it's pretty dark. Like he, he was like, man, I just want people to fucking fuck themselves up. You know, it was like really messed up, but he was young and an alcoholic and a drug addict, but he's learned that like, no, actually our music's like saved people's lives because of the theme and the art behind it. Cause so many people relay and it helps them get through shit, you know, which is pretty wild. 100%. I mean, there's black metal is very vast. There's so many different topics it covers, you know, but a lot of it, most of it is, it goes right in line with what you're saying. Well, I, I mean, it's, it's like we were talking about earlier. If, if you think you're alone, like utterly alone in your thoughts and your impulses and your emotions, whatever it is, if you think you're utterly alone, you're going to be in a worse spot than when you recognize you're not yeah. like everybody goes through this. And so when, when art is able to encapsulate that and showcase it in a way that's human and pulls at your soul in a way you're like, I feel this emotion. Yeah. That's powerful. That's like wielding magic in the world, you know? And, and I think all the sun. Yeah, dude. Like for instance, like this past weekend we're at, we're at moot, you know, we're all just 
sitting around a fire listening to this music that somehow is perfectly coinciding with the conversation we're already having, but like the, the, the way it's flowing and just like the emotions it elicits and this nostalgic hope for something that's lost, but you know, you're going to reclaim it is like, you, you can't really put a value on things like that. Yeah. It, Everybody was just sitting there like, yeah, holy like, fuck, dude, yeah, this like is like so just perfect. powerful. Yeah. Just perfect. So cool. Perfect. And uh, so, yeah, so I, I've always had, you know, a big obsession with music and I've always been a metalhead thanks to my parents, but I got into a little bit more esoteric things, which was very tied to, to black metal. And, uh, that was all pretty much after my departure from, uh, from organized Christian spirituality. But, uh, I never went through like an atheistic page or phase. I never was, I could always feel there was something more probably because I've always been very deeply rooted in nature. You know, I, I, I can't, I hate being inside. Mm -hmm. Like it's, if I'm not barefoot outside, at least for a few hours a day, like I will lose my mind. And so I've always felt this inherent connection to something beyond the veil, I guess you could say like a power beyond the powers. And, uh, and so it was just, uh, what I was given at Christian church didn't seem to be it, you know, Yeah. but it sent, it sent me on a journey and, uh, I'm grateful for it. Cause it, it also like, you know, let's be honest, there's, there's really good value system in most organized religions. It, yeah. It, and, uh, I mean, that's what I was raised on and like, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful for it. You yeah. Know? Well, especially like, whenever you talk about large groups of people, like 300, <clears throat> 330 million people, the best way to organize 330 million people is to have them all believe something. Right. And, and that, so like, I kind of noticed that early on, I guess. And, um, it doesn't again, take away from the problems that it no, creates. No, 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 not know? at all. But, but it definitely does help organize and like keep people, in line i guess you want to yeah you, you want to say and this is like kind of a taboo subject but something you you encounter a lot in um and like more deep i don't want to say deep but uh i guess more traditional philosophy is this idea that there's different types of people and there's different types of connection with the divine and for some people something more exoteric i don't want to say superficial because it's not superficial it's what they need is almost prescribed and they need regiment and they need a way to feel that communal presence of God or the gods in a way that makes sense to them within that setting. And then you have other people that are like, I need to go deeper than that. I need to find what's past that. And then you start to look at the esoteric religions. So for instance, like in Christianity, you have two distinct trains of thought. You know how you have the the power of the church and these are your rituals. These are what the, the scriptures are. These are the beliefs. And then you have things like Renaissance alchemy or the Rosicrucians or these, these other schools of thought where it's, or, or even like Masons today, right? There's, there's a different slant where it's like, we're going to investigate this further. And so for me, I've always gravitated towards that, whether it's in science or history or religion, I want to know, the deep dive. Like I want to get to the bottom of it, yeah. you know, and that's probably partially because I have like a mechanical mind. So like if something is wrong on a car, you could be like, well, I can replace that belt, but it's like, well, why did the belt break? Mm -hmm. The tensioner is bad. Okay. Well, why is the tensioner bad? Well, it's rusty. You know what I mean? You start to, to take yeah. it down to its base components. And that's always been interesting to me is, is what's beyond what we can see. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I think, uh, I think it's a fat, I mean, yeah, it's a fucking brilliant way to put it. It is. I mean, it, Jake t t always says these things really yeah. well. I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. I get really like autistically yeah. excited about it because like <laughs> I, I'm passionate about it, you know, like, because the, the thing is like the more you start to investigate those things, the more it's impossible to not be convinced that you live in a divine cosmos that is full of intrigue and mystery and excitement and terror and everything. It's like, it's it's Lord of the Rings, man. Like we're we're living yeah. in a crazy fantasy world. It's yes. just like we're, we're stuck on these like oh scroll this you know like vote this do this. It's like dude, you have archetypical things flowing through reality at any given moment of the day that are so far beyond your comprehension. But the second you can start to like try to comprehend them, they just flow into you, and you, yeah. you like it, you just it's like we were talking the other day at Moot, you know. We all see a black cat and it's like, everybody's seen a black cat before. It's not that big of a deal. But for some weird reason at that moment, we're all like, whoa, black cat. What 
caused that reaction for us to all note it as something significant. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? <clears throat> I, I can't help but not be interested in things like that. Yeah. Well, that the was... inter- I think the interest and the passion is, is fascinating, but it's also like you're very articulate. Like you're very like you put the things and it's like we were talking about before, like a, a sign. I've heard this before and I think that it's true that, that a sign of genius is being able to put something complicated simply. And that's like kind of what you're doing. You're and it's very interesting. I don't listen. know if I'm a genius. It, well, it's a sign. But, that, I'm, but could, I'm trying to be. But you, <laughs> I don't want to be. But you could express something, and that could be a genius. No, I appreciate ex- a genius it, expression. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And and the way that you're articulating this this stuff. You know, I mean, I've heard him talk about it quite a bit. But even for the completely uninitiated, I think that you can really understand where you're coming from. Yeah, with, I with think like, uh, you know, it, I'll try and speed along a little bit to get to this, but. One thing I've gotten really, really, really into the past year or so has been astrology, but like traditional astrology, not new agey, like, oh, I'm an Aquarius. I like the color purple. (laughs) Today I saw a dolphin. The gods are speaking to me. And it's like, (laughs) no. Um, But all of these texts I was reading when I was like based back in high school and up until current just continually were referencing astronomy and astrology. And I realized it was a deficiency in myself to, to not be able to speak that language. And it truly is a language. So I sought out and I found um, like a professional Hellenistic uh, astrology course. And the reason I chose that as opposed to things like Vedic astrology is like I'm a Westerner. I already have these myths and archetypes alive in my conscious because I was brought up with them, right? And it's, it's helped me understand myself in a way that I, I can't even put into words. Like I wish I could, but I can't, but an example would be, you know, you're, you're talking about um, breaking down difficult components and trying to uh, synthesize them or articulate them in a way that is digestible. Well, for me, or like for anybody, right, right. For me, like I'm a Leo rising. So like I have a strong personality. I can be arrogant. I can be an asshole, but I can also like be very leader oriented and be like, this is where I'm going and I'm, I'm going to stay true to it. But my son, which is kind of in traditional astrology, like the plot line of your life is going to be around those themes of where your son's at in your chart is in Aquarius, which is a Saturn ruled sign, meaning in traditional astrology, the God at the end of the solar system, he ruled the golden age. He's been dethroned. He's sitting at the edge of the th- solar system, but he can see everything and he can understand everything. And he's lived it all because he's been King. He's been dethroned. He's, you know what I mean? Like he's seen it. He's grandfather time at the edge of the cosmos. And that idea of reaching out to that vantage point or going into those depths to where other people are afraid to go and finding the gold there and finding the light there and then bringing it back to the people that either couldn't or didn't even know to, that to me is like my life's work is I I am more than comfortable putting myself in harm's way and going into the depths and the shadow to get the lost light because it needs to be brought back to the surface and resuscitated. And uh, like, I've become obsessed with that. And I think it was partially because I read a lot of alchemy when I was, you know, alchemical texts like Parkolis and, and, and a lot of these other texts like Plato's Republic in a lot of ways is an alchemical text, you know, like there's these recipes of reality that help construct and carry out, you know, what we call the Dharma, right? Like how are you aligned with the will that is of the highest good for everything? And to me, I'm like, I just want to be an instrument of that. I failed at it a million times, but I'm just interested in how do I keep cultivating that and how do I give that to other people? You know what I mean? So what 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 is um like on a basic level? Mm. Keep with the theme. What is what is alchemy? So alchemy in its very superficial element is uh, transmuting lead to gold. So like a base thing to a higher thing, but. What it really was, was a carryover of older mystery schools and older mystery religions that then took on a symbolic value um, and a symbolic um, uh, language in order to camouflage itself basically from the church. Because the church, when Christianity really took hold of Europe and the Middle East and all that, it it was very, very concerned with stamping out anything other than its dominion, right? And what was unfortunately lost in that process was a lot of this very um, well thought out and very beautiful connection that man has with the earth and the cosmos. 
and us being, you know, in the Norse cosmology, we're in Midgard, right? The Middle Earth. Well, in the chakra system, where is Middle Earth? It's your heart. So we're in the heart of the cosmos, and we're bridging higher and lower worlds, but we are that experience between the two, and we're the oscillation between those two, like we're the expression of life. And so alchemy deals with being able to find those lower elements and uh, purify their essence to raise out their gold elements, to, to raise that higher consciousness out of it. And, you know, on a, like in a pagan sense, right, this ta takes place seasonally, like a seed is planted, it sprouts, it grows, it turns into a crop, that crop eventually yields fruit, the fruit is harvested, and then it dies, and like there's this, this pattern of it, and alchemy is concerned with making use of those naturally occurring patterns to better purify and, and assist nature in in perfecting God's beauty, basically. So you can you can do that in a spiritual sense, right? Like you have you have parts of yourself that need refinement. Like for me, a massive thing that I've had to refine throughout my whole life is is lust. Like I, I lust has been my demon, right? But it's also in alchemy the key. Like you can't just repress the things that that are harmful to you. If you just Put them in a box. Don't want to look at them. What's going to happen? They're going to come out. Just <laughs> Pressure like, cooker, yeah, dude. Yeah. Like it's going to end. Yeah. And, and so it's dealing with how do you confront those things and transmute them into higher things? Because for instance, like, like anger is a really good one, right? Like if you're, if anger is something you really struggle with, well, what is anger really? Like it's an insecurity. It's fear. It's, uh, it's fear. fear. It's, 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 it's fear. I'm not enough. Or, or I feel, uh, I feel restricted or it, and it's an internal thing. It's always an internal thing. So it's almost like channeling these things. Like, yeah, yeah. Because like, I had I I talked to, I talked a bunch about that addicted to greatness shirt. You know, right. and it's like Different addiction. Kind of addiction. Yeah, addiction's yeah. been a thing. So yeah, like, yeah. all right, you're an addict. You can't just like eliminate that, right. but you can put it in other avenues. You can like, reprogram. Yeah, it. you can reprogram it. So yeah, okay, maybe I'm not smoking crack anymore. But like on a basic sense, like, all right, I'm in the gym. I'm hooked on that, you know, and yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm progressing in that way. But like you're getting the same thing, kind of thing from it, 100%. but you're channeling it in a positive way. And well, so just that's what you're saying. Yeah, it's like, um, you know, our friend Jesse says this all the time. He's like, everything's a mirror. Everything around you is a mirror. That's from the four agreements, right? I think it is, is actually. It? it is from the four agreements. Well, but it's totally true because in like. In the intro, that's the whole intro chapter is about that, about how the guy discovered that and started seeing himself in other people. Mm. Yeah. Of the yeah. Well, like yeah. It, if you, and it's not to say that you have to accept, like there's plenty of things in society that I don't accept that I'm like, there's no element of that within myself. But if I sit with it long enough, I can understand. Can empathize. I can understand the human element of it and I can understand why I have the reaction I do in a way that doesn't have to be hateful, that doesn't have to be anti. I can, there's a difference in like, so again, alchemy and like really all spirituality kind of centers around this idea of the sun, right? Like the sun is always emblematic where it's Christianity. It's like the sun of the God, right? It's like, you know, and in and, and pagan senses, it's like there's the solar seasons and, and the way that these, these characters flow. And then obviously in astrology, but what is the sun? Like the sun gods. Right. You know, like, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but the sun literally exists off of nuclear fusion. That's how it sustains itself. Elements fusing together. And the byproduct of that is warmth and light. Energy. Life. Yeah. And so there's, there's a coming together. But then the second it departs from that, it falls. There's a fall right down to the material plane of earth. And then there's this progress of or process of becoming things grow and die and th 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 there's there's a ebb and flow of everything here but we have that component in ourselves that's like that is just pure being that's just like if i just sit still and i observe everything around me i can know what's me versus what i'm observing and to to project any emotion onto that like is there's a difference between doing it as an action and doing it as a reaction like oh i don't like that i hate that i'm going to respond with hate or i'm going to note that i'm going to think about it i'm going to observe it now i'm going to act because if it's a mirror what you're reflecting out there is what you're going to get yeah so if, if you're just re reflecting these insecurities or these these negative emotions what do you think is going to bounce back at you right. 
And so I love when Jesse says that because it always catches me because I'm like, yeah, man, it's yeah. the truth. He like, said it to me a few times too, and I, it's one of those things I don't often think of, but yeah. it, it's, it is a really cool way of looking at it. 100%. Man, that was all beautifully said too, by the way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, very. I, you explained it all so well that it was extremely digestible for you know the common person that's not into those things. So, hell yeah. I, I think the, it, I th- just as a... I think I have an interesting perspective on a lot of these conversations because you're kind of like bringing him in and Brad in because you already have like a relationship based on a lot of this stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it's totally foreign to me. Right. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, what is out? I don't even know what that is on a base level. You know, like I've heard this term a lot because of you, but like you mentioned Vedic, like you said, because I was brought up in the Western, you know, I didn't, right. but like most people probably that went whew, like way over the head. Right. But the, and, my point is to me still like hearing some of that stuff. I'm like, okay, I'm kind of starting to catch on to some of the stuff because I've heard you say it or, or whatever. Yeah. So like when you heard that or when you said that, I knew what you were talking about. When you said Vedic versus yeah. Western, like, okay, it took me a second, but, but the principles of what you're talking about is like universal. Yeah, right. So yeah. Ved- and Vedic is going to be more like an Eastern school right. of thought right. Right, as opposed to Western. Right. Which is what I'm saying. Like I, I've heard that enough that I, that clicked for me, but that's where it can get a little bit confusing because there's a lot of terminology. Yeah. 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 And that can like, wait, wait, what did you say? Wait. Yeah, so, so, I mean, it, that's why I'll come back to like, what is uh, alchemy? Yeah. You know? The, the one, I guess, kind of guiding tenant of my entire life has been a concept known as perennialism. And so perennialism is basically that truth with a capital T can only be true regardless of how it manifests. So there are, there are cosmic laws, there are cosmic realities that you cannot escape from, they're truth. Whether you comprehend that truth or not is irrelevant. Whatever is the sustaining force of all things that is permanent and fixed because within it everything's occurring, that is a perennial force. But what you have is, if you study, so like in, in college I studied um, religion and I, and I, I went to school for philosophy, but then I went, um, I realized they had religious studies and I was like, is this theology? And it's no, it's not. It's looking at how do you look at every religion with a uniform um, scientific approach, like a scientific process to be like, okay, this is how they practice ritual. Ritual is this. Now I look at any culture and I can understand how those are rituals and you know, the root word of culture is cult, right? So cult. I've talked about this before. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm super in value, have a lot of value from that, that um, degree because it it taught me how to look at religion in a way that's, you know, uniform, but also accounts for the differences. And so what's been really interesting to me, and I tend to focus specifically on things that are um, Indo-European because I'm a Western European man, right? Like that's my ancestry. So I already have this. uh, Yeah. That was something that was funny. Whenever you told me that about why you, why you uh, like, why you're pagan. You're like, well, that is my ancestry. And I was like, yeah, it's already alive in your blood. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. (laughs) So like I I felt that calling and like you said this perfectly because I, not to interrupt, but um, we were talking about, um, you know, someone had asked me, like, so Joe, like, if you're going to convert somebody, like, if I was going to convert, help can't ch- do it. convert someone to Christianity, like, I'm like, all right, here's this book, this is the commandments, this believe is that. that and believe like, that you were saved by Jesus, be baptized. Right. Yeah, like, it's simple, right? And now he was like, now how would you do that? And I'm like, you really just can't put it like that. I mean, and it's like, and but that's, at the end of the day, you, that's where you get the bullshit about people like, but I never had so exclusivity I, that you're not letting people in. Right. And shit, well, I was, like, it's not about that. It's about the fact that you don't, you literally aren't yeah. of this well, ancestry. So, like, so I was I, real quick. I was right. raised in church. Yeah. I was baptized multiple times, all that stuff. Right. But like no one converted me. I just felt a calling. Like yeah, I, it was my there. heart, it was already my there. heart guided me. It was already there and I just sought it out and then I'm seated. And like, that's, so that's the thing. If anybody ever is like, Oh, I want to, like, I'm never going to be like, hey, y'all need to come my way, you know? But right. if someone's like, hey, Joe, like, I really like, love what you're like, like, like yeah, Brady, yeah. you know, I want to come around. I'm like, that's fucking cool. He feels that calling. His heart's yeah, speaking it's, something it's greater to him. It's a free will thing. Like, uh, you can't. It's almost like, not cause, a Because we've had the, you know, when I when I got married, right, with, with my wife now, um, sh- her family was Christian. And they were very concerned that I was going to convert her. And, <laughs> and, yeah. and, and I was like. No, that is. It, <laughs> you can't. It, like, there's, there's no conversion there's process. There's no need to be concerned. Be, because, because if you're alive today, anybody alive today, your blood has been in existence since the dawn of time, blood which powerful. is insane to think about, yeah. right? Like, you, you as a living creature today have been around 
in multiple bodies yeah, like and a drop time of frames. your blood like we've, yeah we've tracked both For, of those back so far like yeah crazy so so there has been a time frame before christianity and if you resonate with christianity that's fine but to deny everything prior to that as if it never existed is an absurdity. Yeah, hundred percent. Because that's and that, that's as factually untrue, right? Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I was gonna say this earlier, but I didn't. Want, I want to let you keep doing your thing. But I'm just gonna jump in with it real quick. I was my my stepfather that I was raised with for 15 years. He was atheist, and mm-hmm. my father is from East Tennessee, and he is Baptist, and his whole family's Baptist. So you got like very traditional Christians. And then on a day to day basis, I was living with an atheist. So I got yeah. literally <laughs> full spectrum. Yeah, I got, yeah. I got <laughs> complete opposites. Yeah. And I think on another psychological subject that we can get on to another thing, I think it kind of fucked my head up because it's like you go there and it's here and you go here and it's there and yeah. et cetera. But um, I think that there were a lot of difficulties that I faced being introduced to atheism that young. I think right. that, like, you know, my stepfather was a terrible person, but of all the fucked up things that he did, I told my mom, a couple of years ago, I think the worst thing he did was he, he fucked up my, my well of faith. He poisoned my well of faith because at a very, very young age, you put it in my head. These are stories that teach right. you how to live, but it's not true. Now, whether it is or not is my point is, is that that was put into my head. Well, see, and that, and that's, that's why, again, perennialism is like the guiding force because, okay, let's say it's just a story to help you live a better life. Well, why is it that story then? Because there's a truth value assigned to that narrative right. that is, uh, that is everlasting. That that truth, again, with a capital T, is able to be articulated and disseminated and show up in a million different places, in a million different times, in a million different ways, but it's always true. Right. It always resonates as truth. Well, it's and like, how did freaking Marcus Aurelius's handwritten shit, how is that still, how is it even possible that that's still around? And it's because of the yeah, truth Yeah, it's, because it's, it has a valid, quantifiable truth value that is not something that you can just say, this is dogma. Like, yeah. no, it's beyond dogma. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so... For me, like I, I've tried to find the things that, and, and my litmus test for it is like, okay, it has a truth value across more than one culture. It needs to have a truth value across the cultures that I descend from. And then finally, does it actually sit true with me? Mm-hmm. Right. So like, if like you, you read some, I'm not, I don't, I don't know if I've ever read anything like this, but it's like to get to heaven, you got to murder 600 people. Right. And it's like, if you read that in a million different sources, you're like, well, it must be true, but it doesn't sit well with you. Like there's a reason yeah, it doesn't yeah. sit well with you. It's not true. Right. That's a great, yeah. that's a great point. Yeah. That's so, point. so like people need to, I, I'm really passionate about people taking an active role in their spirituality. Cause it's like, don't take it from my word or anybody's word or a preacher or a book right. or take whatever. I'm here experience it yes. experience it and if it doesn't sit well with you there's a reason for that yeah, yeah I, think and, I think that's awesome and and, and that's so uh the sec the sec, flip side to that coin that i was going to say is that because you were talking about truth and you were talking about them about christianity in particular that you know kind of ignoring things that happened before christianity right obviously that there's no dinosaurs in the bible you know there's like examples like that right um but on a super simple super simple level like one of the ones that i Again, it's kind of kind of a simple thing, but kind of not. But like, Jesus was not fucking born on December twenty fifth. Yeah, bro. right. He yeah, just wasn't, yeah. bro. Like, yeah. and well, so like, I got to a point where I'm like, we're going on December twenty fourth or December twenty fifth to church to do this big thing, and it's just fucking patently false. It's right. just not true. But it's but just, but but there is the truth value of it being the solstice because that like that that symbolic value of. um This episode is brought to you by the Music City Fit Expo. This is the largest fitness expo in the South, all held within 70,000 square feet at the Nashville Fairgrounds. There will be more than 150 fitness vendors, ranging from apparel, gyms, supplements, and more. Um, This is going to be at the Nashville Fairgrounds May 13th. Come out, watch tons of fitness events, uh, meet four times Mr. Olympia Jay Cutler, support vendors, and meet tons of amazing people within the fitness industry here in Middle Tennessee. All of this and more May 13th at the National Fairgrounds. For more information, get your tickets and head over to musiccityfitexpo.com or find these guys on Instagram at musiccityfitexpo. Thank you. The sun returning and hovering because uh, like people don't yes. really think about this. Like the, the sun at the winter solstice like stays at that degree point for basically three days until it rises again and, and the new year begins, right? So like there's... A truth value to that. Yeah, there that, is, yeah. Well, it, so it's, not, but, it's but, not necessarily yes. saying that's wrong. You know what right. I'm saying? But, but, but Jesus as a historical that's what or I'm religious saying. figure like, was not born on that day. When you're saying that yeah. Jesus was born on December 25th, and that is what you're saying, 
like verbatim, like you're like, hey, today, today we're going to celebrate because today is Jesus's birth. Right. And like once I got to the age of realizing that that wasn't true immediately, I was like, wait a second, what? Yeah. Yeah. And that that's why I think like. And that's just one example of a bunch, you know, and, yeah. and I told somebody recently, I was like, what I have an issue with is like whenever I was growing up and I would have these questions, I was met with like, you need to just, just have shut faith, up, faith, take it. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. Blind faith. I can't or, do that, man. And like, when I said, what I, what I said to her was, I said, you know, in my opinion, you're asking for, you're asking for my heart and soul and eternal heart and soul. And I can't ask a couple questions. Well, that's what I people got to consider what, no matter what, what kind of negotiation would you go into right. where somebody's like, Hey, I want your eternal soul. And you can't ask a couple questions. Well, I, I've always said this too. It's like, you know, a lot of people are like, well, what about the people in the Amazon that have never heard of Jesus? Are they going to hell? And they're like, well, yeah, they haven't heard of, God. I'm like, if you genuinely believe that the divine is that cruel, right. what are you doing serving that thing? Yeah. That's terrifying. Like I, I'm but not, then, but then, you know, the, on the flip, on the, you know, on the flip side, you know, that's, I think that was that mindset. It was constructed by like the early church structure. Yeah, it was that a was power like grab. Obviously trying to eliminate other religions and stuff like we talked about. But I'm, I know so many people nowadays that I admire so much that are Christian. That but don't feel that way. That don't all. feel that way. Yeah. They're like. Because they've broken out of that box. Yeah, they're like. Like, you know, they, it's, it's everything. Like, it's not just religion. Like, if you're a person that, that is meant to be like, a, we live in America, right? Like, freedom is the, is the cry. Yeah. And like, yes, America's falling apart. Yes, there's a million and one things that are wrong with the place. But that idea of I am free. Yeah. That either resonates with you or it doesn't. And it applies to everything. Exactly. And, and that's why it's like you and I talk about this all the time. Like part of the reason we follow the old gods is like my gods know that and they want me to embody that. And when I'm not, they let me know I'm not like, I thought you wanted to be free, dude. Like I thought yeah. you wanted to be like to be your best self. I thought you wanted to grow into this like uh, our highest level of what you are, but you're just sitting there eating a Twinkie. Yeah. Like, what is that? And sometimes you, know I mean? you may just have to pay the consequence of getting run over by a car to yeah. fucking like or, have that test. And I know it sounds brutal, no, but like it's how that it is works. how it, it, it can be brutal at times. You it's know, saying these works. tests can be, it's not supposed to be easy. Yeah. So, um, but like I, I was saying, you know, but you got people that don't think that way. And I love seeing that. And I love, I love being on this platform and being able to open minds and it's open growing, hearts. Man. Right. Because it's like, I'm able to connect with people that do feel different with me spiritually, but yet we still understand one another and we respect one another. And it's for like, sure. Hey, you're on your path. I'm on mine. And well, it's beautiful. And that's how like it should be it's rather I mean, than condemning people for the fucking, when there is so much worse shit going on mm -hmm. in the world, we're still damning people for like their different spiritual beliefs. Right. And that's the thing. It's like, if we could set that aside and realize that we're all aiming for the same thing, we all want goodness in the world. We all want the light, right? right. We all want to love. We, we do really desire the same thing. So just eliminate the fucking titles. Well, yeah, then we're, we're trying to pursue the same path, you know, the way like people, like it's such a big thing, like celebrate diversity, right? Okay. Well, do you really want to celebrate diversity? Because if you do, you need to recognize that this force behind all things is all things and it can manifest and be through all things. And it probably wants it because that's how things played out for there to be different groups of people different ways of thinking and different ways of interacting with life itself. That's a good way to put it. Like, God, don't you think that God probably wanted it to be this way? Yeah. If yeah. It, it, it's, it, that's a good, that's a perfect way to put it. Well, yeah. it, th that's why like for me, you know, like how could you believe in a God that's omniscient and all powerful and right. omnipotent? And then, and then, yeah, that's, and that's then, crazy. but then we'll be one narrow thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah why it, would God create like, something to make it just uniform? Yeah. Right. And, 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 and the he, way I've he always must have created the other religions too. Yeah. The it, way I've always know? thought about it is like, we know scientifically that we are at least partially light, right? Like everything material is basically in some different wavelength of vibration, a type of light, right? Mm -hmm. And those generate acoustics and they generate wells of gravity and the gravity generate like helps attract matter. And, and this dance is what facilitates conscious life. Well, if it's light and there's, let's say there's one beam shooting that light, it's the full spectrum. If it's one thing, it has to be the full spectrum. And if it's not, then it's gotta be multiple things. And, you know, like depending on if you're like, polytheist or, or a monist or like a panentheist like you have different ways of expressing that again that's normal like we're we're human we're trying to articulate something that's beyond our comprehension yeah. and the beauty of it is it is right yeah but if it's light and it's the full spectrum 
It's going to generate different sounds, different colors, different wavelengths, different ways of being. And that is okay because that's the richness and contrast of existence itself. Mm-hmm. It's necessary. And, yeah. And so like, of course, if I went to Africa and I was with a tribe that, of hunters in the African jungle and their, they had, you know, their tribal deity would embody the things and values that made sense to them for where they were at. And it's not to say it's a fake God. They're real. They're there. So therefore, that articulation of the divine is every bit as real as mine. My ancestry comes from the north. Our gods are... are You're f- not going to resonate with theirs. Yeah, you yeah. Know? It, yeah. It's not going to be the same expression, but, but it's, it's going to yeah. still have that same yeah. truth value of what it's trying to get at. Exactly. And yeah. and to me, that's like that's the key is just being able to... to to hold that tension between those two points. Uh-huh. It's almost like different colors on the same spectrum. Yeah. I like different colors you. on the same rainbow. Where are we at in time? 117. All right, we got some time. All right. All right I just I just want to make sure because no, I know. We do about 15 minutes or so. Uh, what's that? Just, Second break? No, we already already reset it. We're good. Um, so but we only got 15 minutes left? I um, mean, we could go to the end of this this run, which would be like 25. <sighs> So is there anything between you want fifteen? To, yeah, but like twenty five would be the most. Okay. Is there anything when you tell more about your story? Yeah. So I guess uh, make it quick. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, after high school, I joined the Air Force. Um, ended up getting stationed in Okinawa, uh, which was a huge thing for me spiritually because all of a sudden I was in this little island in the Pacific. They were a combination of Buddhism and ancestral paganism from Okinawa. So like ancestral veneration and death worship was huge like the whole island is basically a cemetery there's all these tombs everywhere and i was just mesmerized i was like you know every time they have this festival called oban where they believe the dead come out of the sea and they're back on the island and everybody cleans their tombs and everybody puts on corpse paint and walks through the the um the streets banging drums it's like a procession of the dead similar to Samhain. yeah similar to Samhain or or, um or the day of the dead dead, yeah yeah. exactly and so i was like that's what i thought you kept describing i was like that sounds just like everybody does it like it it, it's it's only in modern times that we have got rid of such things because it's become taboo like because you're afraid of people are afraid of death now because they're like what comes after do i go to heaven or do i go to hell and it's like first of all like you're gonna die so you need to accept that and like everyone that's came before you has also died so like it's okay you're gonna be all right and befriend death befriend that reality because it's coming yeah so that was super intriguing to me and i got really into buddhism while i was out there but i never really felt that i could be a buddhist because i was like i i understand a lot of these concepts but there's still some things that didn't have that full truth value, but I studied it deeply and it got me interested in, um, and think that's how I kind of got into the Vedas is because, um, Buddhism, which is so like Vedic spirituality is, um, so the way I found out what this is, is basically like Buddhism comes from Hinduism for the most part, but Hinduism itself really comes from the Vedic faith, which was brought by, uh, Eastern migration of... I think I talked about this before a little bit. Yeah, so so the Vedas were composed in around 1500 BC in India, but the people that composed them, uh, I'm not going to say the word because we'll get kicked off YouTube, uh, (laughs) came from basically Northern Europe. And genetically now this is proven, this, this is how it happened. And those people were cousins of us. And so what's interesting is when you read that those spiritualities like the Vedas, there's a lot of stories and similarities to things like Germanic paganism or Norse paganism Mm -hmm. or Celtic. And the reason for this is because originally they came from one culture north of the Black Sea. So when I found that out and they started having all this genetic... For uh, those of you confused, this is genetically and archaeologically... Yeah, if you look up Proto-Indo-European... This is very... This is fact. So the way they originally found out about this... I know what you're dancing around, but they don't, so you're good. Yeah, (laughs) so so the way they found this out is originally philologists, so people that study language, specifically like... Englishmen that were over in India were like, "Why is do these right, Sanskrit right. words sound like Greek and sound like that had to Irish?" Been, that had and, to have been weird as shit. That yeah, and like, so the so they theorized it for a while, and then um, this lady named Maria Gimbus came later, and she was a, a feminist anthropologist. So she had this idea that there was an old Europe that was dominated by women, and then these assholes came in on horseback as men and destroyed it all and took over, and they brought their language. And they left these tombs called Kurgans in their wake. She was partially correct. 
Europe was never matriarchal that way that she she wanted it to be because like kind of the feminist um, slant that she had. But she was correct in that they brought their language and they brought their material culture. And so recently in like 2015, so like towards the end of my military career, they started digging up these bodies and testing them and starting to realize like this is actually just one expansion of people. And it went basically from north east originally part of it was in Siberia and it came down, but it was like north of the Black Sea. But then the, the group that went westward into Europe is what we all descend from. And so they brought their spirituality and their religion, but their cousins went east into India. And so they brought the Vedas. So is the Black Sea like in the middle? Black Sea is basically north of Ukraine. And they went like that? Yeah. Okay. And so the Vedas, the, the Rig Veda, 1500 BC, it's like one of the oldest religious texts composed in the world. It's beautiful. It's, it's, epic poetry mm -hmm. but it's also hymns and it's it's very very old pagan beliefs and so i became very interested in that but as i was learning about that i was learning about this bigger picture of the proto-indo-european so then i was like well what is my ancestry like i know we came from england but what about before that so i started researching more and more about that and um just tried to to start to align my studies with uh, um what spirituality was calling to me that i could also prove was was there you know what i mean it wasn't just like a, a faith-based thing like it needed to have that element it but i needed also to to be able to to follow this story like i like to follow the story that's a good yeah. way to put it to so, be able to follow the story yeah yeah and so that ended up um you know i, I don't want to gloss over it but we might talk about it if i come back but yeah i was i was married originally when i was in the, in the military and uh, i got married very young my parents got divorced the same time i joined the military and so i was like i'm gonna prove you guys wrong i got it and it and it was a huge learning experience, extremely heartbreaking. But, um, you know, I was married for six years and got divorced at the same time I got out of the Air Force. So I got out of the Air Force predominantly because I was like pretty disenchanted with it. I was like, what are we doing? You know, I yeah. started, started to pay attention a little bit more. You don't seem like the, the military industrial type. No, like I, I am all about hero culture and, and warriorship. I think that um, being a man is to be a defender, is to be a protector and be capable of those things. Yeah. But I think the second that you um, become a mercenary for uh, for corporations that hate you, you're not quite in the right. And I know that's probably going to offend people that are in the military, but, you know. Probably not, dude. You'd be surprised how many. The amount, all, everybody, <laughs> I know a lot of military people that think that. <laughs> everybody yeah, I yeah. served with got out for a reason. Yeah, you know well, what I mean? Like That's the thing. If anything, it's sad how much people will agree with that. It, it's heartbreaking. And. And you should, like what you were saying, like you believe in the warriorship and the fight for your country. And like my grandparents and my family served, right? And like, yeah. they believe in those things, you know, and you can. You Literally can, every generation, like my, my first ancestor that came over to America came over here as a slave. He was an indentured servant. He was thrown in prison because he was an orphan and they didn't know what to do with him. Came over as a, a servant, served seven years, joined Hogs Rangers, fought for the queen, then joined Washington and fought against England and every single man in my family past him has been in the military so like uh, it's part of who i am yeah. Yeah. but uh, but there's a reason my ancestor back then saw england and what they were doing was right. like i have to now defend my home against this right. and i feel like a lot of military guys today are like this military this government has now pointed its guns at me and mm -hmm. what does that mean i don't know yet but uh, you yeah. know mm -hmm. it, i i feel like i'd be lying to myself if i said i believe in yeah, yeah. democracy and coca-cola for all you know yeah, like it's sure. just, <laughs> it's, uh, i'm I not I, without going down a super big rabbit hole in this i think that that seems to and again i think it's pretty unfortunate and it's unfortunate because it's true but yeah. it's unfortunate because it, it does seem like a lot of military people are disenfranchised with the fact that they feel like mercenaries and they feel like why are we you know even like with the middle east stuff it's like why are we, i don't have any beef with this person i right. don't i don't give a shit about this like i don't you know and then obviously the wmd thing with 911 that really yeah. i think that really revealed a lot to people that like this oh, whole, yeah. the whole premise of why we're here was a lie and i think that that just that 100%. you know well and then probably the best thing that happened was for that to come out well yeah it's so a, a big thing about paganism and like broadly speaking, like my spiritual practice in general is cyclical history. Things repeat themselves because we are bound to the material world for the time being and things in the material world have governance. They have things that happen in cycles to keep it all going. You know, energy is eternal. It's everlasting, but it can only be in a battery for so long before it goes into something else. Yeah. Right. And so it, to me, America, I think will have a rebirth, but I think all empires have 
a dark night of the soul and a death. And I think that's natural. And I think it's, um, it's healthy to address that in a way that's like not, you know, make America great again. It's going to yeah. be here forever. And it's like, well, yeah, I agree. Let's make it great again. But like, let's acknowledge the fact that we live in material existence and atrophy and entropy will occur. And that, like, right. what does that mean? But because of that, the light will overcome. Right. We talked about this the yeah. other day. We're sitting at Home Depot parking lot and we're talking about the Lord of the Rings scene when they're in Helm's Deep. Yep. And it's like, all hope is lost. It's like, fuck, the orcs are broken through the wall. And that's when Gandalf rides from the they east. They see the, the light, light in the east and they're just like, and yeah. then, and so, you know, that's what happens. So, so the Sun Grail project, to make it real simple, is that. We're in the land of the setting sun at the time of the setting sun. So what are you going to do about it? Go find the sun in yourself and bring that light to light up the new dawn because the world is going to crash and burn one way or another, whether it's our lifetime. But if you're standing there as a fire bringing light and beauty to the world, that's I'm all that matters. Amped. I'm amped up now. Well, I mean, that's just what we're going to do. <laughs> like, like it's, it's the whole idea of like, you know, if you don't like the world that's around you, build your own, right? Yeah. Well, I don't want an ugly world. I want a world full of love and beauty. Yeah, because I I've, I experience so much. Of, I do truly experience so much of that already. Right. So we can we can make the world that yeah. you know. But so my it, boy, my boy Jordan Peterson, he says make uh make sure your house is in order before you criticize others. Ooh. Right, and, and I mean, and, and so like great point to bring up because, and I, I hate to be at kind of at the tail end of this, but it I I would not be in this mindset whatsoever had I not crashed and burned and failed before all my brothers and friends, because I fucked up, you know, I wasn't living in accordance with those mm. principles. I was in a relationship. I should, I should have got out before, but I was too weak. I wasn't able to get out of it. And I just kept trying to convince myself, like I can stick it out. It'll be all right. And I ended up cheating on, on the girl and, you know, I broke her heart in a horrible way. And it's one of my biggest regrets in the world, but it took that very public, very um, disgusting where I had to see myself Again, everything's a mirror. I had to see myself in the mirror and be like, that cannot be. You want to know? And in order to find the light there to, to pull it back out, you know what I mean? Because I looked at myself and I was like, this is not the man that I want to be. And I couldn't have done that without the failure. Yeah. I really couldn't have. Exactly. You know? So you got to take, you know, failure is important like that. And I, yeah. I just, I, was, I always think it's crazy because Jake and I, so Jake and I were born in the exact same hospital in Tampa, Florida. Yeah, it's fucking dude, weird. It was, and it was the ritual of me and you and Brett. I'm dude, telling you, like, it was, and then we, yeah, like that's what sparked it. So we did this crazy <laughs> ritual on the great conjunction and with our wolf pelts and, and shit. Yeah. But like leading on up the to the great this, conjunction. Yeah. So the great conjunction was 2020. It's like basically right before COVID and everything really set off and, in, in astrology world, like there's reasons for that. I, 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 way too long of a discussion, but long story short, we chose it because it was an initiation point of a next great cycle. And I wanted to burn away everything that was not meant to be on that journey. And I couldn't do it by myself. And so like, before we did this ritual, we all sat there and like, we were tearing up and telling each other, like all these horrible things we did that we were not proud of. And yeah. like, just wanted to let go of and within what six months, psh, shit hit us hard. Shit hit Everything. the fan. Yeah. All of us that were there, and and we were able to like you know it wasn't fun. It was a lot of discomfort, and it was humiliating. But it was exactly what was needed. Exactly, and I, I talk about like I, I just love our the chain of events with us, and I love it's how crazy, fate man. ties in because you know Jake and I like like I said born in the same hospital, met at a fucking black metal show in Atlanta. Yep, and I was like. We started talking. Some did, someone introduced us, and it's like we both were just got out, just got out of the Air Force around the exact same time. Uh, we both are students at MTSU, yeah. And I'd never seen this dude before. Well, both, guess what? Both riding motorcycles, later, yeah. Both riding motorcycles. Two days later, it's a Monday. I'm walking across campus. I'm like, "What's up, dude?" And we yep. just started connecting. And the next thing you know, this whole journey. And and then then last year we took an oath together with the Hari, and it's just like it's fucking crazy. But like, bought, in the midst, uh, bought houses to, to next to each other, lost the houses next to each other at like the exact same time. <laughs> yeah. Like those relationships yeah. crashed and yeah. burned. It, it was, was very crazy. It was just crazy, man. And the but houses were as an accident too. I'm assuming. Like you didn't mean to do that, did you, or did you? Oh, no. well, sort of like I knew he was there and his mom was my realtor. Jan oh, Adams, okay. best realtor in the game. Yeah, her out, she really is though. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was like the, the whole, it was a new construction and it was like the only house that was in my price range that I was like, this is not falling apart. And it was, it's like, plus it's by Joe. I was like, this will yeah, work yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, that's but, funny. Cause I was, a, I would have been, it was a very short term thing. I would have been over was. there a couple houses down from you with him a few times and didn't. Yeah, even man. Know. Yeah. But, but, it, but it is like, we talked, we talked about this a lot on the car ride the other day, like fate is a real thing. 
And people, people struggle with the balance of fate and free will. And it's like, I, I think about it. So in, in Germanic tradition, you have the sisters of weird, right? W Y R D. And they're the fates. They're yeah, like in the all, strings. Yeah. In Greek. all, in all European mythology, you got the What's fates. What's the Greek one called? The Is Moria. The, okay. Or, 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 I'm thinking about the ones like in the freaking Hercules com or uh, Hercules animated movie where they're, well, yeah, they're the, playing the flute or whatever, but they're cutting right. the strings. Well, they yeah, just basically got to call them the fates, but you know, you got past, present and future, but it's all woven together. Mm -hmm. And the way I think about it is like if they're weaving a thread and they're knitting this tapestry, the past, the choices you've made, your ancestry, everything that's happened before passes you that needle. It's coming. It's a faded thing to get the needle. But what are you going to do with it? Mm. That's you. That's your free will. But the second you make that choice, now you've impacted past and future. And it's all here now. It's all cyclical. It's all cyclical. It's all here now because mm -hmm. it's like the eternal now. And so when you have those moments of like being <laughs> bulldozed by fate like yeah. what are you going to do about I remember, it i remember hearing a guy talk about like time being concurrent yep. like you know how like the past affects the future the future does, affects man. the past it all affects one another and it's pretty wild when you really start looking That's at i was thinking about this on the way up here because we were i was um, yeah it was like string theory and all that it's yeah like, well i saw a video the other day of this guy he was talking about a trip that he took he was talking about a dmt trip that he took but I'm also yeah, we still gotta talk about ayahuasca. I'm also I'm also a big Marvel fan, and they're doing like the multiverse thing right now. I was talking to him about Marvel. He's like, I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a big. My dog's name is Stark. Like after after Iron Man, so like I'm a big Marvel fan. But they're doing a multi. I like his car. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that Audi. Sick Audi. Yeah, yeah. That, Audi. that was right when that came out, bro. When I yeah. saw that video, I was like, "What the fuck kind of car is that?" The E-Tron. It's an R8. Oh, he had, he had the E-Tron in the last one. Anyways, oh, I don't know. Well, I just, when Iron Man one came out, the Audi R8 had just came out. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet sickening, V10. sickening. But anyways, they're doing the multiverse thing and they're doing the timelines thing and it's confusing and all this shit and whatever. But um, it's a weird like tie-in. But this video I watched the other day about the guy who did a DMT trip. He said. Long story short, at the end of this trip, he was like sitting at a table with his like past self and his future self, and then he was like his current self. Yeah. And he said that it was actually like super like I don't know like beautiful to him because he in there's a movie titled this, but it was like everything, everywhere all at once. Right. You know, he was like, I am the future me so, and the past me dude, and the present me. Uh, yeah, I, it's know. definitely like we're and we gotta get Jesse on and do an ayahuasca episode. But so part of like being ran over by fate and needing to do something about it. Um, what was it? 20 to 2021, 20, right? When we went to Costa Rica. Oh yeah. So, uh, my wife now, Julie, she was getting out of a relationship and, um, we, it was one of those things where it's like, I've, I, you know, like I'm big into the grail quest and they say, the woman is your fate. And it was like, what I bet you I was like, ain't no getting out of this one. You know, it's just <laughs> like, this is what's happening. And so, um, it was chaotic and it was crazy and everything, but she was like, Hey, I'm, I'm going with my best friend down to Costa Rica. We're going to do ayahuasca. And I've wanted to do ayahuasca forever. Ever since I found out about it, I was like, this is crazy. I, I have to experience this in my life. So I told Joe and Jesse, it's like, let's go. And we all went down there and, um, you know, everybody has their own experience, but the thing that was so significant to me was like, we're all in this room and it's basically like you're inside of a UFO. It's like this yeah. know, circle room. It's really weird. And everything always feels like it's spinning and elevating. And, um, and I, I had this experience that was just so crazy because it was this voice coming to me that was most certainly not me. Ayahuasca is like, they describe it as like a serpent mother, right? It's definitely a feminine energy. And she was stern, dude. She was like, do you know who you are? I was like, I think so. She's like, do you know who you are? I was like, yeah. Do you know who you are? Just like getting more and more progressively upset because I was like not answering it. Sure, you know. And this is on the heels of basically ruining my life because I, I couldn't control myself and just grenading. And like we talked about the other day, it's like ultimately I probably wanted that to happen because I needed help. Yeah. You know, I was too proud to actually ask for help. So like I needed to grenade myself in order to be like, yeah, yeah. I got to get help. Yep. And so I'm there and, and I kept trying to fight knowing who or what I am. And I got, it sounds absurd, but if you've done ayahuasca, you know what I'm talking about. Like <laughs> I get zapped out of my body and I'm in a UFO above the earth or something. I can see like stars all around me in this like control panel and there's these three long green fingers just kind of very gingerly turning this globe. And, uh, and like it was a first person view. And I was like, oh, what is happening? You know, like I, could, I knew it wasn't me, but I was looking at it as it was me. And then just one of the fingers just 
bloop, taps this button and it zaps me back down to the room I'm in. And at that time, I, I had this overwhelming sensation that there was like a lot of dark energy in the room. Like, because in ayahuasca, it's kind of like everybody's demons come out at once and everybody's working through it all at once. <laughs> and again, that question came, it's like, do you know who you are? And immediately I tuned into the music and this guy was playing this really empowering Icaro, which are like these, these medicine songs to guide you through the journey. And I stood up and I started dancing and I just was envisioning myself as like a flaming serpent dragon thing. But I was like, I'm going to devour every ounce of darkness in this room and make people smile. And, and like, I don't, like, I'm not a dancer. Anybody that knows me, like if I'm at a show, I'm in the corner, just like scowling. Like I <laughs> don't dance, but I had to. And I was like just dancing this dance of the sun. And I sang the Gayatri mantra. And I was like, I'm here to bring light. Damn it. Like, that's the only thing I know. I'm, the only thing I know about myself is like whatever horrible things I've done, whatever idiotic things I've failed at, like it was all to help further refine that gold that I had to bring from those depths up to the top and just like give it away as much as I possibly can. Hell yeah. And it was, dude, it was, it was life changing. It was you know? fucking powerful. It was so sick. Hell yeah. Like, Thanks for sharing that too. Yeah, do man. you think that was the answer to the question who you are? Yeah. I like now, do I think I'm Quinto Quetzal or some dragon? No, but but it, like the the archetypal idea right. of like I'm here to bring light to other people. That like I think everybody has their own sun inside of themselves that they're meant to shine onto the world. Right? I just want to help other people do that. But the only way I can do that is to shine mine. And the, the way I shine mine is to like try and show you or, or weave a narrative or teach you like these things that you start making click connections and you're like, oh, I'm going to bring this out further myself. Yeah. And so like, that's what I'm trying to do. You know, I'm trying to just empower people to be more authentically rooted in themselves and I love it. Give the gift of their love to the world. Fuck yeah, brother. Hippie, my, man. My favorite poem is uh, Our Greatest Fear. Which a lot of people have seen in Coach Carter, where he says our greatest fear is that we're uh, our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our greatest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. We are, dude, and that's like the main quoted part. But it's actually a like a whole paragraph, and every line of it is fucking incredible. And towards the end, it says, uh, "As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others." I like it. See, oh yeah, um, you know he got his head tattooed with Sanskrit, right? Mm -hmm. So I've been wanting to get my head tattooed as well. But the the one that I'm probably gonna get done. Um, it's not a poem, but I mean, I guess the Vedas are poems, right? It um, in the Vedas, there's there's a line, and, and it's basically in this hymn to Savitur, the hymn to the sun, and it starts out and it says, "It was the hour before the gods awake," and that stillness, that idea of perfect darkness before everything unfolds, like I always try and keep myself right there, because then it's like, well, what are you gonna bring? Like, like. You know what yeah. I mean? What's the first thing that you need to bring? It's to be game time. Right. Like, well, if, if it's it's before everything starts, what's the first thing that should start? Hell yeah. Like The light. That's awesome, man. Where are we I at? Love it. We're just about to cut out, so that's probably a good time. If you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk more, damn it. <sighs> We're at an hour 40, bro. <laughs> no, um, it's all good. Bring it back with Jesse, man. We're bringing it back. Real yeah, weird. bring yeah. Because I'll touch on some of these I, things and then have yeah. I'll just, you want to talk right. about mind blowing? All right, real weird. quick. Uh, taking responsibility. So take responsibility Do for that. everything <laughs> yeah. in your no everything yeah. everything extreme things ownership. out of your, extreme responsibility because. The second you do, whether it's your fault or not, you're in control. You're in control. So have what you are you going to do extreme with extreme ownership? It? Yeah, yeah. I love yeah, it's 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 the same thing, man. Service, right? If you take responsibility, you should be wanting to serve. Yeah. Because that's that's how you're going to plant good seeds. You're going to service those around you. I'm, I'm running wow. through all of them, man. I'm down now. <laughs> trying, to serve, <laughs> trying to service everybody. <laughs> service, dude. We ain't getting into that now. Whoa. Whoa. All right. Ooh, this took a turn. Service uh, everybody. I just had flashbacks to uh, well, Jack's. With the, the truck, <laughs> Jacks, come get him. Come truck. get in the back of the truck. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we, we'll, we, yeah, we'll, just, we'll touch Jake's, on this another time. <laughs> Jake's ad read was for prostitution. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Well, Jake, what a way to end a great spiritual conversation. <laughs> yeah, <prostitution. right. laughs> Selling your body. <laughs> That's what we do. No, but um, 